Today I'll be talking about um, shoe thinking or guys in heels. Not so difficult to see, but in the next 15 minutes, I shall discuss shoes and how they help in solution seeking. You have to scroll it up. Peacemaking, love spreading, and general design development with occasional references to dating, friendships, and shopping. Yeah. So I was, um, I was out with friends for drinks last year when I was introduced to this set of very stylish friends. And um, very beautifully dressed people, very stylish. One of, them, one of the more good looking ones in the set chatted me up and asked what I did for work. And I said that I worked for a bank, which is true. Uh, but when he found out my full name and that I used to be a shoe designer, his eyes grew larger and suddenly was quoting lines from my interviews in past magazines and TV interviews years back. And then he told me, but you know what? And he found out I was in social development work. And then he told me, but you know what? You can save the world by designing shoes. And I was driving home and I thought, I don't know how to save the world by designing shoes. I don't know how that could happen. So, but let's start with a small story um, about saving the world through shoes. Maybe if we were more eco-friendly with our designs, we actually could design and design shoes to save the world. I'll tell you about the legend of the eight leather monster, a design project from before. When you use leather to make shoes, you end up with a lot of extra cutouts. So those parts in light blue, so that's the leather in dark blue. The pattern is in yellow, and the cuts out, the extra cutouts are in light blue. So in our factory years back, we would have sacks and sacks of cutout leathers of different kinds of, of leathers from different kinds of animals. And we realized that we could use these different leathers and put them together with very expert stitching into a nicer, more interesting shoe. And we made one, we called it the Eight Leather Monster. We thought that it was very beautiful, but at the same time, the value came from putting together waste products or waste leathers and selling it more expensively. And we did the somersault in the idea, and we thought, you know what? Instead of making it eight leathers, let's use not leather, let's use vinyl, and it becomes a more interesting somersault of an idea. And that shoe is mine. That's not me, that's a friend, but that's not my feet, that's not my foot. And then I thought, you know what, we could design pairs also that remind us of what things should be valued, what is important to us as Filipinos in this country to save the world, yeah? So maybe we could create shoes that remind us about environment, about biodiversity, about animals and ecology. And this, this slide is for the ladies. It's um, the angel, the angelfish shoe. But really, so now I thought, is saving the world just about designing beautiful things? It's the easiest thing to think, yeah? I realize that this may not, this point about empathy may be the greatest thing that shoes can teach us. You don't have to read the long amount of text. I'll tell you right now, it's more fun to place yourself or put yourself in the shoes of other people. You solve more problems, you understand solutions, you have less fights and arguments, maybe dates and outings are more enjoyable. Start to illustrate my point, I have this very interesting story, interesting story from the past, the story of Dudus. I have this good friend, let's call him Dudu, and he called me up one time, that's his real name, calls me Boo Boo. Uh, he calls me up one time and says, Boo Boo, Brian, I just got a pair of white pants. And I'm like, wow, that's really interesting. Like, it's, it's like, um, what kind of pants did you get? Oh, these are like $20, $25 pants, and this is in, in Manila. And I said, you know what? That's really great. That's a really good deal. As long as you don't wear your white pants with black shoes. 
because you're going to look like you're going to off, you're off to do something else. And besides, the color combination of white and black is just too severe. So he thought, what should I do? And uh, you know what? Round shoes, mm, maybe. But you know, I think colorful ones or even blue ones will be more interesting. And that's when, we, that's when we came up with the colors, with the shoes, doo-doos. And that's what they're called. And then we thought, you know what, we can make it in a lot of other funny, interesting colors that remind me of how this friend is to me, doo-doo. So I created more colors and called them like um, yellow likey, gray days, funny olive, and purple hickey. Very interesting colors for shoes. And then we thought, now I must admit that the illustration, that particular example, was a bit on the superficial. Again, it's just designing beautiful things. We can't save the world by creating more doo-doos and making sure people have something to match with their white pants, yeah? So, but what can we learn from shoes? I think we can understand others better if we place ourselves in their shoes. If we put more effort in how it is to figure out where they're from, what they're doing and where they're coming from. But why us? Why Filipinos? Why shoes and Filipinos? What's up with that? Well, I have a, another small story. I was in a cab in Berlin, and the cab driver was trying to guess where I was from. Are you Japanese, Chinese, Thai? And I said, I was from the Philippines. Oh, Filipinos, yeah. Emil Marcos. how are her shoes? 2,000, 3,000? That's the only thing she remembered in Abu Sayyaf. That's the only thing she remembered about, you know, that's the only thing he remembered and top of mind when he saw me. And I thought, wow, people remember us for shoes. And guess what? China could make the most shoes in the world. Italy, probably the best made shoes. Jap Japan or Japanese will buy the most expensive pairs. But you know what? Filipinos buy, or sorry, Filipinos love their shoes the most. No other culture will love shoes more than us Pinoys. I come from this town, Marikina. And in the photo are women running in stilettos. It's what we call Tour de Taco. Tour de Takong in Marikina. And you can understand if you empathize how difficult it must be to be running a race in stilettos. But this is where I come from. It's really more fun with shoes in Marikina. And then we realized, but you know, if you have very good stories like that about empathy, how could you empathize with this? In DC in 2009, I visited this museum, the Holocaust Museum. And in one of the halls was this room filled up with shoes, a mountain of shoes, from Holocaust victims. And when I was there, I realized um, some pairs were larger than mine, some were smaller, some were pink, some had ribbons. The smallest ones, I thought, two-year-olds, three-year-olds, but these were victims too. And then I would count them and say, there's more small shoes, there are more big shoes, there's more women. And then I felt extremely sad. But the point is, when they talked about it in the Holocaust Museum, in this particular Flickr account, for example, everyone would say the most memorable experience they've had of the museum was from that hall of shoes. So from happiness to sadder moments, we have people empathizing via shoe design, yeah? On the other side, there's a range of feelings. Shoes can bring you sad ideas, but at the same time can make you feel good. We have a pair here from very good shoe designer, Filipino shoe designer, Kermit Tesoro. And this again, this one is for the ladies. And you'll see how the comments, you'll see, just have to count the likes and you'll realize a lot of people have a lot of stuff to like about shoes. You know what, guess what? It's the only thing in what you're wearing that does not really change size. If you're female, it gets larger when you're pregnant. But for most people, you gain weight or not, you lose weight, it's the same pair. Yeah? I was in a table of four just last week, and this is a story about shoes again, but about empathy, or about dating. So we come from political of shoes in a pile in a Holocaust museum to about something romantic. I was in this table of four, and, the, and we were discussing, about a few days ago, and we were discussing dating and relationships. The question being discussed, and I will have to read it, was how long should two people hang out or date until they become a couple, get engaged, or get married. How long? How long, for the boys, how long should we be going out with this girl from the other school to know and to feel until maybe we can call ourselves a couple? The, but you know, the, the, the analogy comes from shoes, and I will have to explain it this way. 
It should just be like shopping for shoes. You cannot just keep on trying the same pair over and over. At some point, you will have to make a purchase. Because you know what? If you keep on trying the same pair over and over, chances are you end up ruining the pair for the next person coming in. And at the same time, if you don't, that pair gets ruined. Eventually, no one's going to buy it. It's going to be on sale. Who wants to be on sale as a pair like that? Again, an analogy about love, shoes, and relationships. Yeah, You can tell that. And this slide is for the boys, for the guys in the general, for the gentlemen in the audience. Linsanity. But I don't, I don't have to fit shoes. But this guy in that last conversation was saying, when I buy my sneakers and rubber shoes, Brian, I don't have to fit them much while I'm shopping. I don't have to look through them so much. I don't like shopping and I just buy them and guess what? The shoes fit me eventually. I like a design I like, I buy it, it fits me eventually. And I told him, you know what you did? You just broke in the pair. That's what you call breaking in. You did not adjust to the shoe. The shoes adjusted to you. And that's a difference again about trying out how people are, where they're coming from, and about how they think when it comes to shoes and relationships. So we have this new world of insight from shoes, from making them, buying them, using them, and loving these pairs. The biggest point here is um, if we put ourselves in the shoes of others, there would, be, there would be less fighting, less arguments, and misunderstandings, and a lot of better designs, maybe even national progress, and development, and even enjoyable dates. So to understand ourselves and others, we must learn to put ourselves in other people's shoes. Where did they come from? Where are they coming from? What are they about? Where, what about their families? Who are their friends? The next slide is going to be a very interesting visual. So how does it feel to put yourself in the shoes of others? Pictured here is a pair by Filipino designer, Joko Comendador. Very beautiful. But then I imagine, how am I going to be walking in a pair like this? It's here, so it works. It's an actual real pair. Or another one here is by Filipino-German designer, Monica Fig. And it's called the, spider, the Kiss of the Spider Woman. Beautiful too, all four inches of heels and leather. But to illustrate my point about empathy, I put together this quick, small, mini improv fashion show. So I pulled out a um, gentleman from Savior School to help, to show us how it feels to empathize with women's concerns, with female concerns. So I've asked the gentleman very graciously to help us. Hold on, just stay there. Just a minute. I've also asked some of their friends to help in and guide them as they cross or struggle from the right side to the left of my stage. Hold on. Is it that terrible, really? Okay. Stay there. It's going to be fine. So if you cue the music right now, we have the fashion show. Guys, ladies and gentlemen, guys in heels. Even I have not worn heels that high yet. In any case, thank you, gentlemen. I may not have to discuss any more of their experience. You could have seen how they are from their facial reactions, from how their faces looked like, looked like, or how they struggled from right to left. I couldn't do that myself yet. But um, this discussion would seem like it were entirely about shoes. And, um, but really, shoes are only accessories. Accessories are tools for understanding the human condition. Accessory, these shoes are tools to understand our identity and desires, our dreams and individuals, and as a nation. So please, in the next few days, as you go meet your friends, don't try out their shoes, but, but you know what I mean. Thank you very much. <laughs>